This is my personal drilling routine that I use to become a 5.5 rated player. These are the drills I'm currently doing to improve what's weak in my game. These drills change time to time depending on what I wanna work on. The first drill we're gonna be doing is to work on our middle dinks. I just played a tournament and got a lot of balls to the middle of the court and I was nervous and tight, so I just hit a dink like that right over where the correct shot is to hit a roll dink out wide. That way it opens the court. The way we're gonna work on being aggressive with our middle dinks is a drill called escape room. How it works, I'm gonna be here, my opponent is going to be there. My opponent can only dink balls to the middle of the court and I can hit dinks anywhere. So I wanna work on aggressive dinks to the middle and aggressive dinks out wide. I'm really hitting these balls aggressive and rolling them. That was a little high. That's good. That's the shot. I'm trying to move my opponent around. And this is good for Ridley to gain control back of the point by hitting a reset dink. Nice shot. Nice. That's the one, look at that, yep. That's the one, yep, look at that. Uh, a little long, that's the one, that's the one, yep. When your opponent hits middle dinks, it's usually a defensive shot. So if you're able to take this ball and create offense out wide, it really will put your opponents on the ropes because now they have no safe zone. The second drill we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be dinking cross just like we did. However, there's a twist. Ridley, or my opponent, is going to feed the ball in. I'm going to hit that aggressive roll dink out wide. And then when Ridley hits that next ball back, I have to speed it up, either middle or at my opponent. In a real match, when you hit that roll dink out wide, you'll usually get a dead dink back. You need to be able to capitalize and be comfortable speeding up that next dead dink. If they hit a dead dink and I just tap it back over, like I did in the tournament, you're losing your advantage. When you get the advantage, you have to capitalize. Nice. Yes. Nice. The variation I do after this drill is the exact same thing. However, I don't have to speed up that first ball. I now have the option to either speed it up or dink it. If I dink it and he gets it back, I have to speed up the third ball. What this does is when he hits the ball to me, it allows me to pause and hold my paddle. When I hold, it's gonna put him on ice skates. This is great in a real match. I see my opponent coming to cover the middle. I hold, I dink out wide. Ooh! Ooh -hoo -hoo -hoo. If you're at a tournament and the games are best two out of three, every shot you hit is going to build upon itself throughout the entire match. Meaning, let's say it's game one and we're six points in. If Ridley keeps hitting a middle dink, and I don't do anything with it, I just push it back through the middle, he's going to assume that I don't have any offense there. If I get that same ball and then speed it up through the middle, it's going to catch him way off guard because for the first six points, all I did was push it back over. So you can use this shot to set up so many others. The third drill we're gonna go over is for speed ups and counters. I will be the one speeding up Ridley cannot speed up. All he can do is counter attack my speed up. So I'm really working on choosing my spot on Ridley's body. Here we go. Woo! That's one. There we go. He's nervous. Yes! Oh, that was 20 feet out. Nice. Woohoo!
Now we're switching roles. Only he's going to speed up. Only I can counter. Nope. You're good. Woo! Nice shot. Oh, that was nasty. Ooh. Oh my gosh. The next drill we're going to be doing is to help us get more comfortable at going quick through the transition zone. So how it works, I'm going to either hit a third shot drop or drive. It doesn't matter. What matters is for my fifth shot, meaning my shot in the midcourt, I am not resetting this ball. I'm ripping it and following it in, trying to initiate a hands battle. This strategy is great if you think your opponents are better than you or you're intimidated by them because it'll make for quicker points that could go either way. Yes! This next drill, we're gonna be in the midcourt hitting resets. Our opponent or partner is going to be on that side, feeding the balls to us, working on their fourth ball. However, there's a twist. When you hit a reset and they hit a high ball back, meaning you hit a good ball and they're really reaching for it, you're allowed to smash it and then you play out the point. Again, this gets you being offensive in the middle of the court. Sorry, sorry. The next variation of this is the same thing. However, after say three resets, I'm not waiting for him to hit a high ball. If I think I hit a good enough reset, I can charge the net and then we play out the point. This paddle is the Carbon 1X 16 millimeter, and I have four inches of lead tape right here on either side. If you purchase any gear from carbonpickleball.com, when you go to checkout, use code Tanner, and you'll get 10% off your entire order. The last drill we finish all of our practices with is called Cat and Mouse. How it works, we can dink the ball anywhere. It has to be in the kitchen. If it's out of the kitchen, it's out. Ah, nice. Woohoo! Ah, just out. That's my current drilling routine. It normally takes about an hour and a half to complete, and I do it five or six days a week.